to solidify your foundations upon Salafiyyah. From day one, from day one, begin your journey with the well-known books of Aqidah and Manhaj. Start reading and studying and sitting in the circles of knowledge. And I've just really just put together, just from, you know, from what the scholars have said, the likes of Sheikh Ibn Baz and Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen and Sheikh Rabi' and others, the books that you should begin with. Thalathatul Usul. The three fundamental principles of Sheikh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. With the explanation of our Sheikh Al Walid Ubaid bin Abdullah Al Jabri. An excellent sharh of the book. Or of Sheikh Al Fawzan. Or of Al Allama ibn Uthaymeen. All of these explanations are available. But in the English language, Sheikh Ubaid is available and Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen. Alongside this, so you don't just restrict yourself to that. Alongside this, study Sharh al-Sunnah of al-Barbahari, rahimahullah. Because that will show you the manhaj of Firqatul Najiyah. The methodology that the saved sect proceed upon in terms of following the Sunnah, the Hadith, keeping away from Bid'ah and recognizing the deviants and the people of deviation so that you are saved from their misguidance. Explanation of Sharh al-Sunnah of Imam al-Barbahari of Sheikh al-Fawzan or even Sheikh Rabi'ah. That you get the explanation of Sheikh, uh, Sheikh al-Fawzan and that you study. That's available in English now. Secondly, as you work, once you finish these, then move to Kitab al-Tawheed. Sheikh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. Explanation of Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi. Or Sheikh Al-Fawzan, or Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, then they're available in Arabic, of course, and in English. That you study them, you sit with the student of knowledge. If you can get to a scholar, even better. If you can get to one of the one of the one of the big scholars, one of the great scholars, get to them. But if you live in England, let's face it, you know, there's over maybe two to three thousand people at the conference. You're not all going to get to the dars of Sheikh Al-Fawzan. Right, or, or the Darus of some of the Mashaykh of Medina. So in your cities, if there's someone teaching, Usulu Thalatha, Sharh Sunnah, Usulu Sunnah, then get to those Darus and sit in them. Take your notepads and pens and study. Kitab Tawheed, sit in the Dars. Take the book of Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi or Sheikh Al Fawzan. Alongside that, study Usulu Sunnah, the foundations of the Sunnah. Of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal with the explanation of Ahmed al Najmi. Or Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi al Madkhali. After that, after we've mentioned those two, then the third level is the studying of Al Aqidatul Wasatiyah. Of Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah with the explanation of the Sheikh, the Faqih, and the Imam Muhammad bin Saleh al Uthaymeen. Aqidatul Wasatiyah. Alongside this, so these, all of these books that I've mentioned, you study them in pairs. And if you have a student of knowledge or a scholar, ideally you can teach them to you. Or if you can get to their recorded lectures, then go through them on a daily basis so that you systematically study them. So this third level is Aqidatul Wasatiyah, explanation of Ibn Uthaymeen. Alongside this, to strengthen your manhaj regarding the call of the prophets is to study manhaj al-anbiya fi da'wati ila Allah of Shaykh Rabi' bin Hadi al-Madkhali with the introduction of Shaykh al-Fawzan Hafidhuhum Allah so these are just the beginnings as, as you begin so the three fundamental principles with, the, with its explanation alongside Sharh al-Sunnah with its explanation number two move on to Kitab al-Tawheed with its explanation, alongside Usul Sunnah of Imam Ahmed, with its explanation. Number three, Aqidatul Wasatiya of Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, alongside Manhaj al Anbiya or the methodology of the Prophets in calling to Allah of Shaykh Rabi'ah. The audio explanations of these books by the students of knowledge and by the scholars are available. And they're available freely, you don't have to pay for them. Alongside this, you should not neglect the book of Allah. Read it. Memorize it. Understand it with a, with a reliable tafsir. Such as the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Or Imam Sa'di. 
O Ibn Uthaymeen. Also study the books of fiqh from the perspective of hadith, ideally, such as Balugh al-Maram, with the explanation of the likes of Sheikh al-Fawzan, or Ibn al-Thaymeen, Umdatul Ahkam of Abdul Ghani al-Maqdasi, with the explanation of al-Najmi, Sheikh al-Najmi. And read, always have a collection of fatawa that you're reading on a regular basis. The fatawa of the major scholars, such as Sheikh Ibn Ubaz, Ibn Uthaymeen, Al-Albani, Fawzan, all of them available in two languages, in Arabic and in English. So you're constantly connected to knowledge and you are sitting in the durus. Secondly, so that's just the first point of advice for the one who has turned to the way of the Salaf. Second, be careful of being amazed with yourself. Because after, when, as you're studying these books, you're going to realize that actually, just by studying Usul al-Thalatha and Sharh al-Sunnah or Kitab al-Tawheed, or Usul al-Sunnah of, Ahmed al -Naj, or of, of Imam Ahmed, or Aqeedat al-Wasitiyah, Manhaj al-Anbiya of Sheikh Rabi. That straight away, and if you move on to Bulugh al-Maram, or alongside that you're studying Bulugh al-Maram, or Umdat al-Ahkam, just by beginning those books, you realize that your knowledge is greater than 90% of the Muslims around you. So be careful of being amazed with yourselves. And don't put yourselves forward and don't boast. Because this knowledge is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah who has given you tawfiq and guided you to understanding the aqidah, the methodology, the ahkam of the sharia, how to worship Allah, to distinguish between sunnah and bid'ah, to distinguish between the manhaj salafi and manhaj bid'i. It is Allah who has guided you to this. So don't be amazed with yourself. At the beginning of your journey, focus on yourself and your family in learning and acting. Then after you have sat with the scholars, or with the students of knowledge and your steadfastness and adherence is attested to by those who you have studied under, then you can branch out, moving hastily into the field of da'wah and putting yourself forward is not from the manners of the student of knowledge. So a person, he begins to say, oh, I want my own dars. He sat in five duros and now he wants to make his own video and upload it onto YouTube. This is not the way of the student of knowledge. Humble yourself. Restrain yourself. Go to your teachers. Go to the scholars. Go to the student of knowledge who you, whom you are sitting with. Seek advice from him. You know, yesterday I was telling the brothers, we were standing just next to me on my left-hand side here, and the brothers were asking me about studying. I said, listen, if you can get into the Islamic University of Medina, apply and try to get in. Be sincere, be truthful, you know, humble yourself, show humility, ask Allah to guide you, get into the Islamic University of Medina, or in Riyadh, Jamiatul Imam, or even if you can just get a job, go out there and sit in the, in the durus of the scholars of Medina and Riyadh. If you are not able to do that, then you have durus here. I said, look at this conference. I just gave the example of the conference. I said, you have Abu Hakim, Abu Idris, Abu Iyad, Abu Mu'ad, Abdul Ilal Lahmami, Awais at Tawil. So you have six, let's call it seven. Each of them approximately between 20 and 30 years in Da'wah to Salafiyya. That's nearly 250 years between them in the Da'wah. To add them up because each of them has their own experience. Each of them have their own journey. Each of them studied. Each of them went through the da'wah. Each of them have studied with different mashayikh. Each of them have their own level of experience. Between them, nearly 250 years of experience in da'wah to Salafiyya. Or let's say even if you call it 210 years. That's what you have. Each of them teaches. In Birmingham alone, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, each day there is a dars. Monday, Tafsir ibn Kathir. Tuesday, Aqidatul Wasatiya. Wednesday, Umdatul Ahkam. Thursday is what? The Sulu Sunnah. I should know it's my dars. 
Thursday of Sunnah, I forgot, subhanAllah. Thursday of Sunnah, Sunnah. Friday, Sunan Ibn Majah. Saturday, inshallah, when they rebegin, Balughul Maram. Sunday, lessons for the sisters. Seven days a week, they are durus. Then you have brothers who sit over there at the back and they teach Arabic. Then there are those who teach Quran. He says, Ya Akhiba, I need a certificate. What do you want a certificate for? Alhamdulillah, if you get into the Islamic University of Medina, you'll get a certificate. But you're not going to the Islamic University of Medina for the certificate. What are you going for? For ilm. So you can act. So you can be, seek nearness to Allah. Your goal is not the shahada, is not the certificate. Your goal is Allah. I want knowledge to come closer to Allah. So how hard is it if you want daily classes and you live locally or even if you live in London? Move to Birmingham. Move to Birmingham. I was telling the brothers yesterday, look, French brothers have come to Birmingham for the da'wah because of the hardship of living in that secular society that is so harsh against the Muslims and against our sisters. So they moved to Birmingham from Paris, from Marseille, from different parts of Spain, of, of France, and then brothers and sisters from Spain and from Holland and from Germany and from Sweden and from Denmark and from Norway. Coming to Birmingham for what? Because they want to be around Salafis. And when Allah makes it easy for them, they will go to a Muslim country. You're living in, you know, London. Day in and day out, the same rigmarole. Inshallah, I want to become a student of knowledge. Inshallah, you've been singing that tune for 10 years and you haven't moved. And you haven't advanced. What job is there that you have in London that you can't do in Birmingham? There's no jobs here. There's no employment here. I know we're north, but it's not that depressing. Bring your families. We have a community here. It's not the only one. There are other Marakis in the UK. But if your thing is that I want knowledge, I want the roots every single day because I want to become a serious student of knowledge. Tafsir. Ibn Kathir. Aqeedatul Wasitiya. Umdatul Ahkam. Usulul Sunnah. Sunan Ibn Majah. Balughul Maram. Classes for your, for your women folk. Tafidul Quran for your children. Madrasa for the primary children. Madrasa for the secondary children. Quran for the adults. And when the other masjid reopens, inshallah, masjid sunnah nabuwiyah, then the work will be doubled. So you have access to ilm. And inshallah, when things become easier and the travel situation becomes easier, then maybe you can go and study again. We have our mashayikh in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, still widespread, that you can find and sit with them. But whilst you are here, what are you going to do? Twiddle your thumbs and just, well, basically, I'm just going to wait. I've seen people waiting for 15, 20 years and their knowledge has not increased. And they haven't cultivated their children. But the point I'm making here is, after you have sat with the scholars, don't be hasty. Don't put yourself forward. Don't boast with your knowledge. Don't think that you are better than others. Al-Bayhaqi recorded in his madkhal. That Abu Asim said that a youth from the people of knowledge was present in the gathering of Sufyan of Thawri, Rahimahullah, who died in the year 161. So that youth who was sitting in that gathering, he put himself forward at the head of the gathering and started talking and boasting with his knowledge in front of those who were older than him. So Sufyan, Rahimahullah, he became angry and he said the Salaf were not like this. None of them would claim leadership for himself and he would not sit in the forefront of the gathering up until he had sought knowledge for 30 years. And you display ignorance in front of one who is older than you, get up from me and don't come near my gathering. This is how the Salaf were with people. The fact is not, or the issue is not the fact that people have information or they have memorized or they have some knowledge but you are sitting in the company of those who have strived for 30 years defended the da'wah for 30 years with the ulama 40 50 60 70 years in the case of the likes of sheikh rabi' and sheikh al-fawzan and sheikh al-luhaydan 
over half a century in the da'wah. Others of them a quarter of a century in the da'wah or more. And you've sat for three years or two years. You have not faced any opposition. You have not been refuted. You have not been blamed. You have not been ostracized. You have not been warned against. And you sit in a gathering of your elders and you put your chest forward. I know this and I learned that and I studied this and when I was there. That's why Sufyan al-Thawri became upset. Not the fact that this man has knowledge. Knowledge is not the problem. What's the problem? The problem is self-amazement. It's the ajub. Boasting. Sitting in the forefront of the gathering trying to flex his muscles. Trying to show what he has. What did Sufyan say? He said that this is the salaf of the ummah. We're not like this. They weren't like this. And they would not get up in, and, and, and one of them would not claim leadership. And he would not sit and give knowledge or sit in the forefront up until he had sought knowledge for 30 years. A man has sought knowledge for five minutes and he wants to go on YouTube. And you see them on Twitter. Fear Allah, this is a fitna. This social media is a fitna. It's a fitna, Allah al-Musta'an. That a person feels important because he has 45 followers or 1,000 followers or 20,000 followers on Twitter. And he thinks that he is something important. Why? Because he thinks that this is what it means to possess knowledge. Sufyan al said, if you see a youth speaking in the presence of the mashayikh, even if he has acquired a portion of knowledge, then lose hope in his goodness. For verily he has no shame. So pay attention to this. As you are seeking knowledge. There are people. You know, if we're sitting in the presence of Sheikh Rabi, not saying a word. Well, a kalima. If I have a question, your question better be a good question. And you better have thought about it three days in advance. Because you want to maximize the benefit from Sheikh Rabi, Sheikh Ubaid, Ahmed al-Najmi when he was alive, Sheikh Zaid al-Madkhali, Sheikh al-Fawzan, Sheikh Muqbil. You don't sit there and start talking as if, imagine doing that in front of Sheikh Rabi. Wallah, even when Abu Talha, rahimahullah, used to be sitting, a lot of the brothers sit around him, were younger than him. Because he's our elder. Preceded us in the da'wah. This is how we're taught to respect our elders. Barakallahu feekum. 